Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses Islamic duties and practices by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Salik Shirazi Hafadullah. I'm your host, Mohsin Shah, and joining me is Sheikh Ali Ma'ash. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikhna. Assalamu alaikum, Rahmatullah. How are you? Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. Sheikhna, last couple of episodes we were discussing Khums. Let's move our um, conversation towards another sort of tax, which is known as Zakat. Now, um, could you explain to the viewers what is zakat and, and maybe some evidences from the Quran and hadith in regards to zakat? A'udhu billah as-sami'an alim min ash-shaytan ar-rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tayibin al-tahirin Zakat literally means growth, purity and increase And the one aims to increase his wealth, the one who wants to uh, perform this act by paying the zakat is to increase his uh, sustenance by paying the zakat. And of course, it is a, a wajib act, as I mentioned with regard to the hummus. Now, now zakat um, is a form of fa tax, as you mentioned. And uh, of course, uh, part of the furu al deen which means part of the wajibat and the one obliged to pay the zakat and this is mainly for those who have farms and cattle I mean uh, those who deal with uh, farming and cattle and, and so forth so most of us don't have to worry about uh, the zakat issue but however uh, in some cases some people might have um, cattle and farms and so forth and of course, uh, with regard to the zakat, if they reach a threshold, a nisab as mentioned, then the zakat becomes wajib on them to pay. Otherwise, if I have only just a few cattle, for example, just beneath the, zak the zakat uh, threshold, then I don't have to pay anything. Nothing required to be paid. Um, let's see uh, what the Holy Quran states with regard to the zakat. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim إِنَّمَا صَدَقَاتُ لِلْفُقَرَاءَ وَالْمَسَاكِينَ وَالْعَامِلِينَ عَلَيْهَا The zakat is paid for the, the poor people and those who are in need and those who work for it, who gather and bring the zakat, the collectors وَالْمُؤَلَّفَ قُلُوبُهُمْ Those whose hearts are bought, in other words, those who do not believe in uh, the faith but we can attract them through Buying their hearts towards Islam. Mm -hmm. وفي الرقاب والغارمين وفي سبيل الله وابن السبيل فريضة من الله والله عليم حكيم. To the end of the ayah, that there are certain uh, groups that we have to uh, pay zakat to. So that's the verse of the zakat. Uh, the narration. Um, the Imam عليه السلام states with regard to uh, the zakat for those who do not pay the zakat, the consequence of not paying the zakat. قال الإمام الصادق عليه السلام ما ضاع مال في بر أو بحر إلا من مانع الزكات. There's no money or wealth lost in the sea or on the land except from those who do not pay zakat. Sometimes some people lose sometimes entire wealth or part of their wealth. Um, they try to find the reason for it. Why did I make such a great loss in my business, for example? Why did I, for example, uh, lost, let's say, uh, my assets? You know, there's a, there was a fire, for example. They, yes. they caught a fire, for example, and so forth. The Imam says one of them is for those who do not pay the zakat. When people don't pay the zakat, then this is the, the consequence. Mm -hmm. And the consequence of the Akhirah is even worse. And of course, the zakat, as I mentioned in the beginning, that it brings uh, the khair and the blessing to the wealth, and increases uh, the sustenance and so forth. So the one should be able to stick with 
uh, the narrations in the Holy Quran statements with regard to paying the zakat as it is wajib on every individual. MashaAllah. So, Shaykhna, like um, you know, Holmes was on different sort of categories, is it the same with zakat? I mean, is it on different types of items as well? Of course, uh, the zakat should be paid to um, nine items which are wheat, barley, dates, raisin, gold, silver, um, camel, cow, and sheep. Okay. Nine items in which the one should pay uh, the zakat. But as I've mentioned in the beginning, uh, there's an asab or thresh uh, threshold which must be met so you can pay zakat. Otherwise, there's no need. That's why we, for example, ourselves at home, for example, we buy dates, we buy wheat, we buy um, raisins, but very small amount, so we don't have to pay zakat. But instead, if we have used them, we pay khumus. Mm -hmm, I see. Different uh, method of payment. But this one, uh, zakat, if you haven't reached that stage and that level of threshold of the zakat payment, then you're exempted. You can enjoy them, you know, use them, or eat them with their food without worrying about paying the zakat. But if they reach a certain amount, let's say you have a field, a farm, in this case, uh, when it reaches that threshold, then it becomes wajib to pay a certain amount of zakat. Oh, sure. So it's really based around agriculture and, and farming. Um, what are like, you know, the circumstances and the liabilities for, for paying zakat? As in, who is the person that has to pay zakat? Well, uh, when the zakat item reaches the threshold um, or the nisab as mentioned, and, and in addition, the owners are adolescents, in other words, they are balig, and they are sane, they are free, and not slaves, for example, and be able to execute uh, and dispose the zakat. In this case, uh, it becomes wajib for them to pay the zakat. Well, these are the conditions. So they have to meet these conditions to be able to pay the zakat. Ahsant, mashallah, Shaykhna. So Shaykhna, how much roughly is the zakat on those crops? If these crops were irrigated and, in other words, were given water, uh, naturally, in other words, by rain, stream, and so forth, the zakat of these crops uh, will be around 10%. Okay. And if they were irrigated by the buckets, the pumps, you know, sometimes you bring a, uh, a motorized pump to bring out uh, water from the well, or let's say artificially, for example, so if you manually give the water to these fields and lands, in this case, it will go down to 5%. Okay. So naturally, godly, if they were given uh, water and, and rain and so forth, then it's 10% um, man-made, let's say, or, or given by uh, water manually. Uh, in this case, it becomes 5%. Sheikhna, um what about gold and silver? Because you mentioned that. Uh, how much is the zakat on, on gold and silver? For gold and silver, both, uh, if they reach a nisab, um, which is the threshold, uh, if they reach that amount of uh, grams of, of, of nisab and threshold, in this case, uh, it becomes wajib to pay the zakat, which is around 2.5-2.6% uh, of the total of that gold or silver. So, uh, if the one reaches that uh, amount of uh, threshold of insab, uh, that he owns that amount of uh, gold and silver, then they have to pay 2.5 to 2.6 with regard to the silver, uh, an amount of uh, uh, zakat. MashaAllah. Shaykh, with um, zakat, how is it distributed uh, amongst the people? The disposal of the zakat as mentioned in the Sal Amaliyya, in eight cases. So number one is the poor. So you give it to the poor. Uh, number two, the destitute, the one who is in need. Number three, the collector of the zakat. And number four, those who 
whose hearts are to be won, as mentioned, al muallafa qulubuhum, those who are enemies of Islam, but you can buy their hearts. So they won't wage war against Islam, as the Prophet ﷺ did with Abu Sufyan and others of Bani Umayyah and Quraysh. Um, who the Prophet ﷺ, on some occasions, he gave them 100 camel each. Um, number five, for buying slaves and setting them free. And again, mm. if you have uh, the issue of slaves, you want to free them, then you take the money of the zakat to free them. Uh, number six, the debtors who are unable to pay their debts. Again, okay, so those who can't pay their debts. Exactly, so they, are, they have huge debts. Mm -hmm. uh, they made a great loss in their business. They lost their job. They're jobless mm -hmm. now, for example. They had, have huge debts, for example, uh, from the banks, from people, and so forth. They can use the zakat money as a means of paying the debts. Number seven, in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever is, comes under this title, the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, in some cases, the, some ulama are allowed to spend this money of zakat uh, for the uh, causes of like, Islamic centers and so forth. It depends on the, some situations. So, uh, tabliq and then other exactly, Islamic projects. Yeah. The cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What mm -hmm. comes under it, then you can spend. And number eight okay. is the stranded traveler, the one mm -hmm. who loses his wealth, his money, while he's in a journey and a trip. So also is paid so he can go back home safely. So those eight are the main ones in which uh, the zakat can be given to. And as I've mentioned in the Khums uh, episodes that you cannot pay these zakat, these eight, to the Sayyid. Okay. The Sayyid cannot receive these oh, wow. payments of zakat um, because they have their own payments, which is the uh, 10%. Mm -hmm. Share of the Sayyid of the from the Khums, mm -hmm. the total Khums, wow, uh, which is the 20%. Yes. So they get the half share, the 10% mm -hmm. goes to the Sayyids. We cannot pay them zakat. It's not allowed. MashaAllah. And who's actually qualified um, to you know, um, receive the zakat? Uh, those who qualify to receive the zakat are number one. Um, The most important is that he must be Ithna Ashari. And we have oh, this okay. issue um, that those who are converted to uh, the, uh, school. Uh, the school of Ahlul Bayt and mm -hmm. they're from different schools, yes. the zakat must be paid only to those who follow Ahlul Bayt. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a debatable issue in the fiqh that do they have to pay the zakat they paid in the time in which they were uh, non Shia, for example? Yes. That's another, another debate they have. So, if you pay zakat to non-Shia, then you have to repay it back to the Shia mm -hmm. for bayt You cannot pay it to any other uh, uh, else who does not believe in the wilaya of al bayt salam. So that's the main and the core condition with regard to point, uh, those who qualify yes. for the zakat payment. The second uh, point and uh, those who qualify to be paid we have to make sure that when we pay the zakat to the poor, they should be the ones in which do not pursue towards committing of sins. So you know that if you pay him the zakat, he'll buy drugs with it. Oh, or okay. he'll buy alcohol with it, mm -hmm. God forbid. In this case, you're not allowed to pay them the zakat. So only the, one, the ones who are spending the, the zakat to the right uh, destination and direction. You cannot pay the zakat for, the hose, for, the, for those who pay the zakat to buy forbidden uh, items. And of course, um, it is not permissible and allowed to give the zakat to the one's dependents. I'm sure if somebody is living in a, in a difficult and hardship situation, uh, and he can manage to run his life, so he's not a poor person, but he's finding difficulty in living. He's not allowed to pay uh, his children, for example, or his wife um, zakat because he can't buy them, for example, mm -hmm. specific no. uh, items or clothing, for example. But he's not a poor person. So no, you can't use the zakat to pay your dependents. That's another issue.
Um, and the fourth one, as mentioned, that the states cannot receive zakat, and they have, of course, hummus. But if the situation was worse and difficult, and they are living in hardship, in this case, they can receive the zakat you know, mm -hmm. as a, a final uh, uh, option for them. That even the hummus money is not enough or is not given to them. But we, ha we have enough uh, uh, savings with zakat. You know, we have you know, the, uh, the t treasury, for example. They have enough money from the zakat, so, but not, mm -hmm. not from the hummus. Yes. In this case, we can give them to the Sayyid's zakat in such hardship conditions that there's no way they can get money and wealth from any other sources. MashaAllah. Shaykh, my final question is, do we need to have any intentions prior to giving zakat? With regard to the intention, as we mentioned that um, zakat is part of the ibadat, so, um, and wajibat and obligatory acts in which um, they become wajib on the individual to practice them and perform them. And they're in line with the salah and the fasting and hajj and khums payment, of course, and jihad and other wajib acts in fru' ad deen So in this case, uh, for such act, of course, you have to specify and make the intention that you're paying this item or this amount of money as zakat. Otherwise, uh, you're paying money for nothing just normal charity, or even hummus, for example. So you make sure that you, you keep in mind that this money I'm paying is zakat or hummus, or zakat or fitra, not zakat of cattle, for example, because we have another type of zakat, uh, which is zakat or fitra, mm -hmm. in which uh, you pay the zakat um, on the day of Eid, of yes. al-fitr, uh, after the month of Ramadan, which is wajib, of course. Now, these payments, you have to specify them, at least keep them in your mind and bear in mind that I am paying this uh, with the title of Zakat al fitra for example, or, or the Zakat of, uh, of the um, crops, for example, or if it's hummus, then it's hummus. So you, you can actually have achieved and attained uh, and fulfilled the obligation and, and the duty of paying the hukuq and the wajib shari'i of uh, zakat or hummus. Ahsan, thank you very much, Sheikhna, for that discussion. And thank you to all of you for joining us on this season of Ahkam SOS. Inshallah, we'll see you in a brand new season with new discussions and new topics, inshallah. And until then, why not check out Imam Hussein Media Group, where we have different, different programs in different languages, uh, broadcasting in five languages Farsi, Arabic, Turkish, Urdu, English. Why not check it out? See you soon. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Oh uh -huh.